Look at Revelation 13 for just a second. When you read Revelation 13, the Bible tells us that there will be a final Antichrist. And the final Antichrist will at some point set himself up in a temple that has been rebuilt and he will demand to be worshipped. And not only will he demand to be worshipped, but he will require the whole world to show that allegiance by accepting a mark on their hand or forehead. And the Bible tells us at least it seems this way, that people will be stacked in lines wanting to get that mark. A lot of people are panicking right now because of what they're seeing done with the banking system. And quite frankly, if they were able to stop for one moment and compare what is happening today compared to what has happened in the past, this may very well be one of the most significant losses ever seen in United States history. I'm not talking about the failure of just one bank. I'm talking about the failure of perhaps the last three or four. The last three or four failures carry a combined total of significantly more. And when I say significantly more, I mean significantly more than every crisis we have had in all of the year 2000. So if you take from the year 2000 all the way to 2022, Every banking crisis that has existed or financial crisis that has existed in that time does not even come close to what we have experienced over the last several months. The enemy is good at lying because you have government officials that are basically saying this is just a very minor recessionary pause when we know that what it took to bring destruction during the time of the Great Depression was far significantly less than what we're seeing right now. And the insanity that we begin to see is the idea that people continue to believe that everything is okay and these things happen to just be happening. Now, some of you might be saying, James, looking back at the banks, if we have had so much loss, then why in the world, as a result of these combined insolvencies over the last five or six months, why in the world have we not seen the kind of collapses that we have seen in 2008, that we've seen uh, in the mid-90s, that we have seen uh, directly as a result of many bubbles that have burst in the past? Why aren't we seeing conditions like we've seen in 1929? Well, there's a massive reason for that, and it relates directly to technology, specifically relates to the movement that I believe is being satanically inspired to build a new world order that involves the destruction of money as we know it. You cannot be dealing in cash if you do not want a free society. There is no way in the world if you want bondage that you allow people to be able to freely exchange goods and services with one another because the freer people are, the more likely they are to be aware of the God that gave them the freedom and they will absolutely move in the direction that God intended for them to move. So what are they doing? They're exploiting children. It is the MO of the United States government to exploit children. You may or may not realize that, but if you look at what's going on right now with the numerous movements that are taking place, if you live in the state of California or the state of Washington or many other states that are doing this, you will recognize that they are seeking to exploit children in ways that are unprecedented. Perhaps the most significant of those ways is developed from within the context and confines from every aspect of abortion. Understand this, folks. This has nothing to do with Democrat versus Republican. This has nothing to do with the affiliation of specific political parties. It has nothing to do with the Tea Party Association. It has nothing to do with Green Party, Black Party, Blue Party, whatever you want to call it. Understand what we are dealing with is the primary contention that exists between good and evil. It is all about what is right versus what is wrong. It is about what God has actually declared versus what God has said should not happen. Look at Revelation 13 for just a second. When you read Revelation 13, the Bible tells us that there will be a final Antichrist. And the final Antichrist will at some point set himself up in a temple that has been rebuilt and he will demand to be worshipped. And not only will he demand to be worshipped, but he will require the whole world to show that allegiance by accepting a mark on their hand or forehead. And the Bible tells us, at least it seems this way, that people will be stacked in lines wanting to get that mark. People will be so eager to get the mark of the beast that God will send an angel down, according to Revelation 14, that says, do not take this mark. If you take the mark, you're cooked, you're dead. There's no hope for you. Yet people will still ignore that precedent. People will still choose to do the things that they want to do, thinking that 
taking the mark is going to bring for them some kind of a better life, not recognizing the fact that they just damn themselves eternally. Funny thing about this mark, the Bible tells us, is that nobody will be able to buy or sell without that mark. There, I, I, there might be a few people in some kind of weird black market, but the reality of it is you will not be able to buy or sell without the mark. And don't get me wrong. Understand this. They will create mechanisms that will be used in order to enforce such activity. Guys, we got to wake up. You look at this and you just think, like in my mind, it seems so obvious, doesn't it? I mean, am I going crazy? Doesn't it seem obvious to all of you? Like how in the world can people get this so wrong? How in the world can this happen? It's spiritual. 